Good morning, my fellow yoga travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too, as we continue to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, and live the life we love. And don't forget to loaf and lubricate. All right, it's Friday, PowerPoint day. Give me my crayons back. That's what this is titled. I'm a transit passenger, passing through, passing through, sometimes happy, sometimes blue, but I ran into you, tell the people that I saw you passing through. I'm going to do my level best to get out the message while I can. And what is the message? Well, one of the messages, I hope you hear the Dharma, hearing the word and the upliftment of the heart that it gives you. In the yoga parlance, this is called Shruti Smirti. I heard the teaching and I remember the teaching in Karen carrying with me. So they took away my crayons at a certain age. Instead, they gave me football and the mall. I don't want that. Give me my crayons back, my creativity, my youthfulness. You have to learn to let the lyric flow before the critic lets the guillotine fall. Okay, we all withdraw. We're afraid of the criticism, but you got to let the lyric flow. And then you work on it later. You know, I believe that except for chemical imbalances in the human being, so much depression comes from repressed creativity. It depresses instead of expresses from yourself. When a person says, I'm fine, it means I'm failing, I'm insecure, I'm not good enough, and I'm empty. Don't just be fine. You have to learn to give birth and trust your own images. What are the things that make you feel the miracle of life itself? And what you're willing to do to protect that life? As opposed to introspective meditation, which, can you believe it, J. Edgar Hoover once wrote a book on that, is trusting other people's images. You internalize their images and then you bring that out. You really ought to externalize your own images and bring that out. Then you're not dependent on anybody else's artistic or conceptual framework. Uh, so it's always important to understand the difference between the denotative and the connotative meaning of any given word. The denotative is what's in a dictionary. We all understand that when you say the word car, you know, and so you know, four wheels and windshield wipers and directionals and so forth, heated seats, whatever. That's the denotative meaning. But the connotative meaning is what kind of car did you have? You have a Cadillac, a Ferrari, an old beater, right? a convertible. That's where you make the personal associations. All right, so this is my appeal really is towards the older student or the elder student, but you can do this at any age as you pass it down. How often do you admire younger men or women or anyone younger than you? How important is it to give them the eye of blessing and not the eye of curse and to recognize the worth that they have or see their potential and give them the, the self-confident feeling they should continue to follow what you see as the light that's shining in them? Now, even if you don't do any of these practices, my view is there's a natural, mechanical, minimal, inevitable evolutionary lurch towards greater consciousness. But in our day, you can see maybe the arc is taking us back into getting hacked and uh, having kyphotic posture because we don't stand up so much. But my whole life is connected to what I call homo aestheticus, human the beautifier. We all may have different views of what we think is beauty. I think Diane Lane is beautiful in one way. But I also think Nick Nolte is beautiful in another way. We just have to like dig deeper than what scruffy surface or a bad hair do or bad skin complexion. All right, so good art, as James Joyce says, creates an aesthetic arrest. And that's what makes it transparent to transcendence. It's an epiphany, a radiance of eternity that pours through into the field of time. And according to his definition, because if you want to understand the difference between the fascinating and the sublime, the fascinating shows you that which is awesome. And who doesn't want that? But the sublime shatters your ego and shows the stuff that's awful. Not everybody wants to volunteer for that cracking up of your ego, disintegrating of who you really are to allow this bigger thing to come through. So first you have to understand, and I do this through asana, but you do it through art as well, integritas. When you see a painting, for instance, it's, there's a, a frame around it. It's like it's hermetically sealed. Everything else on the outside of the painting has no relevance. So it's the frame within, and that sets it apart. Just like when you do an asana, there's a whole way that the body is supposed to appear. That's why you see it demonstrated visually, and then you practice it yourself. 
and I know it's like it's the same thing, but now in the second state, it's not integritas or wholeness, it's consonantia, which is the harmony, the rhythmic proportion of one part to the whole and the whole to one, to, to one part. Just like when we teach a yoga posture, so you give a detail to a line in the foot, but that's only part of it, still in relationship to the rest of the leg, the leg to the spine, and so forth. But if you do that favorably, then you end up with claritas. It's the same thing, but now all of a sudden, the epiphany is light-filled. It comes shining through, which James Joyce calls aesthetic arrest. And then you're perfecting the form. Do you ever get it perfect? I don't know, can't perfect infinity. So my teacher says, perfection is perfecting. You go on working the form. And if you do it to the best of your ability, you really lose yourself in it, you end up in what I would call the mystical. And that's not what you get by progressive study. You have to let go of thinking that it's something if I just keep on doing it in the future, I'll get it. You completely let go. And the letting go of it is one of the things that gives it to you. So I hope you get that message and do what you can to live the life and pass it on with all the goodness and the warmth that you have within you. We'll be back with the next Good Vibrations class on January 31st, Wednesday from 11 to 1. Go to my website, Gabriel Halpern, subscribe, check it out. We'll have the details for that class up in the middle of next week. Until then, have a great life. Pass it on.